to really make sure that we understand the way that, that sound travels through different materials, we're going to look at this problem. We've got three scuba divers, the green one, the purple one, and the yellow one, swimming in the ocean. And the green one asks, can you hear me? And our question inquires, who will hear the green diver better? Will it be the purple diver up high, or the yellow diver down here? And to answer this question, we need to sort of look at a few sub-questions first. Let's, let's start off by asking, well, first of all, can sound travel in water? And to answer that, we should look at the definition of sound. And sound requires a couple things. It requires a source and a material to move through. That's a source of vibrations that, that starts things moving in the beginning. And then material for, that, for those vibrations to travel through. And remember that the way that sound travels is by having molecules hit the molecules next to them, hitting the molecules next to those, hitting the molecules next to those until they pass down the energy without any of the molecules having to move terribly far. All they have to do is get far enough that they can hit their neighbor. So let's take a look at our case again here. Here is the scuba diver. Here are the scuba divers. And this one asks, can you hear me? Well, that person's vocal cords are vibrating, causing the air in there to, to vibrate, and that sound energy should spread out from that person's mouth when they talk, even if they're underwater. The next question is, do we have a material for those vibrations to move through? And absolutely we do. We have water. It's made of molecules, and those molecules of water can collide with each other just like molecules of air can in the way that we're used to thinking about sound moving in a regular room. So we've got a source and a material to travel through. So sound is definitely going to reach some of these divers. The question is, who will hear the sound better? And to answer that, we need to remember, well, does sound always travel straight in water? Does it always travel in straight lines, or does it bend? And we can start looking at the answer to that by remembering this picture here. Uh, sound speed seems to depend upon two things, pressure and temperature. And those vary as you go down underwater. Now, the good news is that we aren't going to concern ourselves too much with this whole picture because our scuba divers are swimming in relatively shallow water. These numbers here represent one kilometer deep. That's like half a mile deep. And most scuba divers are swimming in relatively shallow water. And in that area, temperature is the most important factor. So let's go ahead and switch back to our problem here. And we're trying to figure out which way the sound will bend now. And to do that, we need to answer some questions about the sound speeds in this particular picture. Well, we want to figure out where it's warm and where it's cool. And to do that, we need to know where the source of energy that's heating up the water is. And that's the sun up here. So up close to the sun, it's going to be warm. And down deep, it's going to be cooler. Now that we've got that idea in our head, we need to remember how does that relate to sound speeds. Well, warmer molecules are going to be vibrating faster, so they're going to be able to bump into their neighbors faster, so sound is going to be able to travel faster. And downwards deeper, we've got slower moving molecules. Slower moving molecules are going to take longer to bump into one another, and so the process of getting energy from one spot to another is going to go more slowly. So now we're all set to really answer the question about sound waves bending. So let's take a look at a couple different specific little bits of sound energy. Let's take this bit of energy that leaves the diver's mouth going straight out here. This bit of energy is traveling along the same depth, and it neither hits, it never hits anything faster or slower. So all that energy is just going to keep going straight. It doesn't bend because sound waves only bend when they hit a material where the sound speed changes and then they bend towards the slower direction. But if you are traveling in a, in a direction where you always experience the same sound speed, which in our little picture it's always the same shade of red, that means that this wave is never going to bend. But take a look at this wave that's going up a little bit. As it goes up, it's getting to faster and faster sound speeds, and that's going to cause the sound waves to bend towards the slow direction. So what's going to happen to it is, is slow, in this case, is down at the bottom of the picture. So we're going to have our waves bending towards the slow direction, and it's going to look like this. Compare that with the sound energy that starts off going down. It's going down, and as it does, it's, it's encountering water that uh, has a slower and slower sound speed. And as it does that, it bends towards the, the bottom again, towards the slower, the slower moving sound speed. And when it does that, it bends actually towards our diver. 
So if we're looking at this, now we've got the energy bending towards our yellow diver and bending kind of away from our purple diver, who's up above here. So the answer to our question of who will hear the green diver better, it's the yellow diver, because the sound energy is going to bend towards the cold water down deep where he or she is currently swimming. So I hope that helps clear things up a little bit about the, the bending of sound waves. Be sure to take a look more at the reading uh, uh, in the Muller chapter to try and figure out uh, how all this relates to temperature inversions and things like that in the atmosphere. Thanks for listening.